Hello everyone, welcome back. Okay, so this time we're talking about absolute motion analysis. Why absolute? Well, because we're going into general plane motion, which is much more complex and it's a little bit more difficult. But let's jump right into this. There we go. So first off, how are we going to apply this? Well, in real life, things don't just rotate or translate. They do a combination of both. Like the dumping bin of this truck, well, it rotates about a fixed axis that's passing through this pin at point A. Um, and also, it can be extending, so like this can be moving back and forth. So the angular position of the bin, it can be specified using the angular position coordinate theta, as well as the position of that point C. So when you're an engineer and you're designing this, you're having to relate the velocity which the hydraulic cylinder extends, as well as how that affects the angular velocity of the bin. Because you don't want it to go too quick, otherwise your cylinder is going to snap because it's got too much stress. You don't want it to go too slowly, otherwise you're just waiting a really long time. So we have to figure out how we're going to connect all these different things together. Or in this case, we have a large window and it's operated by a hydraulic cylinder. And that position point B is going to be related to the angular position theta of the window. But a designer had to relate the translational velocity of B of the hydraulic cylinder and the angular velocity acceleration of the window so we don't accidentally crack the glass. But how would we go about that? Well, let's figure it out. So when we look at this crank right here, we've got a lot going on. Um, we have Let's see, rotation right here, we have rectilinear motion right here, and then we have our good old plane motion right here. So if we want to know information about this, we're going to have to find some points that we understand and go from there. Like, for example, the position of piston X, sorry, piston C, as a function of distance X can be defined as a function of this angular position of the crank. When it's fully extended, well, it's at its longest length. When it's, you know, all the way back here, well, it's at its shortest length. And then if we wanted to, we could differentiate X with respect to time and figure out how the velocity of the piston and the angular velocity of the crank are connected. We're going to need this when designing an engine, because remember, pistons move, but we're taking that all from rotational motion. So for example, in an engine, the stroke of the position piston is defined as the total distance moved as the crank angle varies from zero to 180 degrees. So how does the length of the crank AB affect the stroke right here? How does that affect the stroke? I'm not gonna tell you this. One of the things I want you to work out on your own. Just write it down, draw some pictures and see what you come to. Okay, see what you come to. It's one of those times where graphing paper is actually really helpful. So maybe try it out. Okay, so back to our window. We're going to develop an absolute motion analysis method. Okay? And so what we're going to do in this case is we're going to say, okay, that point B on a rigid body is undergoing rectilinear motion um, because of this pin right here, sorry, this um, cylinder right here that is causing it to translate. Now, as soon as we can figure out a relationship, a relation such so that says, okay, that position B measured from point A is going to be a function of theta. We can then figure out the velocity acceleration of point B in terms of the angular velocity and angular acceleration using our time derivatives. So first step, make this function. Second step, take some derivatives. Um, and a lot of times, you're going to need the chain rule. So if you haven't mastered that yet, you need to master it. It's going to be necessary. So let's look at this, and then we'll jump right into some examples and group problems to show it in action, because it's one of those things that it, it just really doesn't make sense unless you see it done. So velocity acceleration of point undergoing rectilinear motion can be related to the angular velocity and angular acceleration of a line contained within the body using the following procedure. So first off, locate a point on the body using position coordinate S. We 
which is measured from a fixed origin. You need to have a fixed origin where nothing moves. Second, from a fixed reference line, measure the angular position theta. Once again, fixed, fixed, fixed. Fixed origin, fixed reference line. And then from that, you can develop a relationship that says, okay, this is how that angular position, or sorry, angular position and my position coordinate are connected. Then we take our time derivatives to get the angular velocity and angular acceleration. Let's see how long I've gone so far. I've gone for pretty good time here. So I'm going to pause here and next time we're going to jump straight into a video because I know that this this doesn't make much sense. Uh, it's one of those times where I'm going to give this to you and it's here for your reference. These steps are important but it's really hard to see unless we actually do some problems. So we'll do a problem next time. I promise. So thank you for listening and I'll see you all later. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.